Hey guys, welcome back to Buster's Corner. Oh yeah, my mic's on live, huh? So Tom's at it again. We got the next gen MoTeC workbook 2023 S season one version one update. Tom, you there? I'm here. Good morning. All right, there's Tom Hogue, you guys. There's our he's our resident engineer. All right, so let's scroll over to we've got Tom's screen up here, and we're doing a live feed on on Discord between the two of us. And make sure my mics are working. That's working. Um, all right, Tom, you got the floor, buddy. We're watching you. All right, good morning. Well, <clears throat> I've been at it again, playing with MoTeC. So we've made a few changes. Um, we've added a few new screens, made some corrections to a few things. Uh, the first thing uh, I wanted to do is to highlight the new version numbering system. What I've done is I've put it, if I look at the, the top uh, left corner, you can see my, I have called this version next gen 2023 S1 version one. What I learned is that as iRacing makes changes to the next gen car, those changes can seriously affect how we're doing calculations and setting up these workbooks. So I wanted to give a timestamp to these version numbers. So is You'll know, okay, so maybe, you know, maybe in three seasons from now, iRace makes a big change. But you'll know that maybe that this version now loses some of the relevancy to new changes that we can't predict. So that's that's going to help going forward, uh, keeping context to these workbooks. So we're going to start out with this, what I I call the overview page. But really what I want you to think of this page as the all-in-one. So the layout to this page originated when we were working with Atlas and we really wanted everything in one page. So we're trying to keep the theme behind this overview page as the all in one page. So as Bob and I worked through it, you should be able to uh, completely set up a car from this page. Now, with that said, I like playing the game. I like tinkering. So, yeah, this workbook may have a lot of screens, but technically this is the only screen you need. It's pretty simple, straightforward, and, and you've seen this already before, but we have made some changes here. Uh, one in the center is your ride heights, and we we went from a, this, the top one is a center rake front splitter uh, out in graph. Now, what we, we were doing is we were giving you a rake based on the the plane that the rub blocks create but a lot of people have come back and said hey i want to i want my rake to be measured from the rear rub blocks to the center front splitter so that's that's what we did there now that's going to give you a new reference number but as you start doing your steps you're going to start using that new reference number and you'll find you'll adjust just fine if you if you haven't been using that number already so we kept the ride heights of these bars there we have the on the we're, the right height bars i'm talking about on the left uh side of the panel just below the left side of the panel that center rake front splitter number in the waveform what i've done is i've given we've created this little bar here so as that um rake goes up and down if that green bar is lower you you can see you have a negative rake as if you go to a positive rake, then that green bar is going to flip to the to the front of that center zero mark. Just below that center front center rake front splitter bar is a side rake. And so what we've done is we've created this bar to where as um, it goes to zero, right? So right there, there's a, that car is leaning to the left. As you as it gets closer to zero, it's going to cross over as that car wants to lean to the right. So that kind of gives you an easy view. What we're trying to do is make the user interface on these workbooks simplified so you don't have to do a whole lot of calculations in your head. Now, you could argue that these bars are is are duplicate data of what's in the waveforms, but you know, as you're sitting there working the setup, you don't want to keep calculating numbers in your head. So that that helps to do that. So below the the side rake bar still on the left side of the screen. We have the speed, the RPM, and fuel level that I pulled from the top to give more room 
<clears throat> for the color time distance graph of the tires that are down below. So what you're going to see is we've introduced these the color graphs that map to tire temperatures. And so we have the left front, uh, the left side of the tire, the middle side of the tire, the right side of the tire. And then we have that for each one of those four tires below these time mapping graphs, the, the waveforms in the center. So you're going to see how, how we play with that, this display a little bit more. But um, if I was to show you a, a lap towards the end of a stint here, you'll see how these tire temperatures, as they increase, we're going to get more color into those tires. So we also have the tire temperatures still as we did in the previous books. On the right side of the screen, we have the left, the left tire across the front, the left front, the right front across the top. And the bottom row is the left rear and the right rear. Now, why I kept these bars here while we still have these heat maps is because these bars here are a great way to really see how your cambers are working as well as the heat, but it gives you a little bit of duplicate data, but a lot of insight in both tires and, and ride heights. And then on the right side of this panel, the little track we have in there where you, it calls out the max RPM that you're hitting down your straightaways, and then your max horsepower that we calculate on that uh, engine dyno page. So you may see a little bit duplicate of, of tracks here, but on the lower on the track on the lower left side of your screen i imagine a lot of people may actually remove this little track display and they may keep it or they may have it float in the middle of the screen so um that's going to be a more of a user preference whether or not somebody wants to keep that lower track so while it may look a little redundant most people may make adjustments to the user environment so that's why we kept that track here on this overview once again as simple as that is, for the most part, most people are going to be looking at ride heights and tire temperatures for their for their setups, and they're going to call that done, right? That's why this is, you know, a great little simple overview screen. And for most, a lot of people, this is the only screen you need. But like I said earlier, I like I like tinkering, so we we have a lot more pages than that. So let's go through those. So the second worksheet in the next gen workbook is ride heights. So here, this screen was kept pretty much the same with a couple minor changes. One is that center rake front splitter outing graph. It's what this is called. The waveforms are outing graphs. This um, was changed. And then I also have changed the left rear height rub minus a rub block. So this is, a, is just a half an inch dis difference from the left rear height uh, telemetry sensor. First straight forward, that gives us that plane. Now, you'll find that this is used. We still like to use this this number here to calculate our side rake, as uh, on the other previous screen. So otherwise, no major differences here. Suspension histogram, we no differences here. I have the shock settings here, so you can have some context. And for me, it's a big deal to give you context on each of these screens, not just the data. Um, wheel, wheel spin, this uh, page, all I did was I corrected some scaling issues. So what people would see is as they would go, during their setups, they would go do a lap, couple laps, come back, and they would see that these waveforms change significantly. A lot of times that's just because there was some auto scaling in here and they would make these waveforms look a little different. So I tightened those up a little bit there. The engine dyno page, didn't change that. That's still working pretty good. I did introduce a new driver screen here, and this is pretty exciting here. So on this driver screen, the idea behind this driver screen is to give you an insight to how you were driving that car, and maybe you could give you some insights in how you could adjust how you're driving to um, to get a better uh, results out of your setup. So let's start on the left side of column here i have the throttle and brake per straightforward i have the steering wheel angle i have a steering pinion and we're going to come back to that in a second i have your speed and your uh right rear spin and your left rear spin 
in on the in the towards the center the first outing graph is the engine rpm to give an idea how you're how you're doing on rpms your throttle and brake out in curves below that and a steer angle now this is this is important here to tell you the difference the steer angle is the angle of the front wheels themselves this is not the same as steering wheel angle which is the device in your hand as you're driving the car so as you change your steering pinion your steering wheel angle will change but your steer angle should remain consistent throughout your different selections of steering pinions this steer angle the angle of the wheels to the to the direction of travel is going to give you an idea whether or not the car is whether or not you're having to put too much wheel into the turn or not enough. So this will give you start to give you an idea of whether your car is loose or whether the car is tight. Again, your below that is your tire heat maps to let you know how you're doing on whether or not you're burning up those tires and how much heat you're generating. I just have the right front and the right rear to give you an idea of whether you're pushing or, or burning up that right rear. Down below this grid is going to give you an idea of your times per um, segment on the track going back to the little the little track on the left hand lower left you can see they're labeled for the turn one turn two straight one to two straight zero to one those those labels are your rows the columns are your laps and the idea here is you want to keep your times as consistent as possible so the dark Darkest green is going to be your fastest times. And then and then there's two shades of lighter green. One is 1% uh, of that darkest of your fastest time. And then lighter green is going to be the 2% of your fastest time. The idea here is you want to have a patch of solid green. And the black start to indicate there was a problem I had with that lap. And I got some time inconsistencies. The idea is you want to become more consistent if, and have more of a solid green field of colors in this grid that's going to help you uh, drive that car way more consistent give you a little more insight into how you're driving the car all right on the diffuser setup on the diffuser worksheet what i've done is because when i first did the uh the diffuser workbooks we were running more of a positive rake in the cars and so what i did is i i changed the um the direction of how I calculate that wedge to the diffuser volume. And so now that gives a, our wedge volume a, more of a positive number. You can see here, I got my wedge volume going a little negative, and that's not good. That should probably be at zero. All right. So not a big change there. That all stays the same. Now on the garage, um, this stays the same. Um, the point I want to make here is, so no changes here from the previous um, workbooks. But I do want to call out here is that what we've been seeing are people not seeing data flowing through to these boxes. And in fact, they're seeing that some of that data not flowing through to some of the other worksheets. What we've seen is those people tend to have the 64-bit version of MoTeC. And that seems to have a problem with some of this data coming through telemetry. So make sure you're not you're not on the 64-bit version of MoTeC if you're seeing uh, data missing here on these pages. It's going to make it easier. Also, I did start adding notes to these worksheets. And then it gives you, it helps remind you what's what's going on with these worksheets here. So let me um, go on down to tires. There was a, a let me start on the tire pressure. We did make a, a big change here. So what I did was, I took this page to, um, because of the way these tracks, these color tracks work, they tend to be more beneficial um, for single lap views. If I click to a different track. So what we've also done is added um, tire pressure stagger concept here, right? So the idea here is that you would see how your pressure changes. over the laps, but what was what we became also important is to take a look at the relationship between the right side of the car to the left side of the car 
and the tire pressure changes, and we're calling that pressure stagger change. So we what we do is we have a couple numbers here towards the center. If you look at the center column here, we have the, for example, we have the front cold stagger, PSI, I'm using the term PSI for air, air pressure. So we have the the left side of the car versus the right side of the car, and we have a 15.9 cold stagger as we did laps we got to where we had a 21.6 stagger across the front and then the the change between those is a 5.7 pounds of air pressure change hey tom this is going to help yep can you go to a lap that uh was long in that stint i'm not sure you had a pit stop in there somewhere yeah you had a pit stop there i was like you had a pit stop on lap 24 so maybe go to the lap before the pit stop and see how hot those tires got um, I'll go back up. Uh, go back where you were. Lap 23 or 22? Yeah, there you go. There's some. Oh, look at that right front tire. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now you're really starting to see the where the heat built up, right? And then we had 8.3 pounds of uh, stagger change on the front, but and 6.9 on the rear. So you can see where that right front is just really building up too much temperature. I mean, in fact, if I run this this guy over to the red, right, we're we're at 310, 320 on the oh wow, right front inner, 320 on the on the middle. And we know based on those previous videos, right, <laughs> where we dig, we went deep into the tires, we know anything above 290 to 300, that tires mush. It's just it's done. Right? There's nothing there. Man, you were praying for a pit stop, weren't you? I was asking for a pit stop. Somebody, <laughs> somebody give me a pit stop without me. In, I want to. I asked for yellows without me involved. Interesting <laughs> though. Look at this. Uh, the front stagger is more than the rear stagger. Um, hmm. Yeah, and that right rear is just not doing any work, right? And that's, and that's the problem there. Okay. I mean that that right rear is cold. That's how you okay. find this stuff. Okay. Yeah. So all right. So that's how this. This page is working now, right? It gives you a little more, it's a lot more useful. Um, now, here's a cool new page that we got here. So this is what we call the tire stint heat map. Now, follow me here. So this is a big deal. So let me click on one lap. So one lap, while this is useful, what's really, what makes this page really useful is if we actually take and we go to drag this guy out for several laps we'll go to the top i'm right at the top and dragging my green box to include multiple tracks so this is the entire stint where i went started at the beginning actually i can get this guy to come out to where we started here all right so now i can view the entire stint to where we go into the pits here where it turns where it turns blue that's where i went into the pits but you can see how the tire built up in that right front and also you can see because they have all, all three edges right the the inside middle and outside of that tire you can see how much my uh, camber is working as well how much heat i'm just shooting across that tire so you can see how much cooler the left front is versus the right front but both front tires have heat in them and then you can see the right rear it doesn't have any nearly nearly enough heat. It's still pretty cold. So that means I'm just completely overworking that right front. And you can see it started happening in 10 laps, 11 laps, 12 laps is where my right front starts getting stressed. It's at 277, right? So let me explain a few things here. <clears throat> All right, so you have the four tires in the rows. So I'm looking at the top row, which is the left front tire, goes across. And I give you the the numbers on the on the left column, right? There's a little number boxes here I have. You can see I'm giving you the middle temperature. Actually, no, I'm giving you the average of that tire temperature ac across, right? I average those three numbers, give you the average tire temperature. So the left front average is 219. The right front average is 288. Then I have the left rear and the right rear temperature averages. Now, here's where it gets interesting, because we always talk about dynamic cross weight. If you look at 
the right here where my cursor is, I'm the second row from the bottom from the bottom. I have left front to right rear tire temperature average. So this is taking the tire temperatures from the left rear. No, I'm sorry, from the right rear to the left front. And I'm averaging that at 218. I have the below that I have the right front left rear, which essentially is your cross weight. When we look at that cross weight number in the garage, that's reflecting how much work is being done by these two tires. So when you look at these two averages together, really what you're looking at is your is the results of the dynamic cross dynamic cross weight you would have into the car. So having more heat into the left rear right front, which corresponds to that heat in the right front above, this shows that I got too much cross weight into the car from a dynamic perspective. Wait, 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 I got the answer. I got the answer. You're too tight, right? You think? <laughs> you that think that thing's a snow plow. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it does. But okay. what's cool is what's really cool is the holy grail to the setup is is trying to figure out what your dynamic cross weight is. If I look at tire temperatures, we don't need to know what that number is, but we can see what the result is through through this cross temp difference. So we want this to get as low as possible. Right now that's too big of a gap, minus twenty seven. And then below this, below that row is the front tire temperature averages, the front and the rear tire temperature averages. Obviously, we want to see that balanced out as well. So this is what we call the tire stint heat map, and it just gives you a huge insight into what's going on in the car as a result, right? Well, all that work we do in the setup is about getting, these are the results of all that setup work. This screen here gives that to you. And it gives that to you with the trend over time over laps. So that's pretty cool on this one. Yeah, that Any one's other awesome. Questions? That one's awesome. I love that screen. And then again, notes to help remind you what it is we're looking at from a stuff like the cross temp difference. I do go and define that. Yeah, now we say PSI PSI stagger. We don't know how much is actually increasing the diameter of the tire though. Right? right. And so and right. And so I make a point here in this in this note page to say so in racing, when we talk about the term stagger, we typically talk about stagger in the terms of tire size difference, so like on the old tour modifieds and sprint cars and all that, right? Circumference of the tire, yeah. Circumference of the tire. We're not talking about that. We're talking about air pressure difference. So the term mm -hmm. stagger in itself is it is it implies difference. So we're using that term to imply the difference in the air pressures. Yeah, no, we're we don't have data to even if those cars those tires were to grow. The size that grows is probably pretty minimal. There, there would be some difference, but not enough for us to. So then, could we also about. say though that as a tire increases in in air, that tire becomes harder, which becomes a stiffer spring? Oh, absolutely. So as your air pressure increases, that's there's a. I had the number one time is like, I don't know. I don't want to give a a bad number here, but the spring rate of the tire absolutely increases with air pressure. So when we talk about That's stagger, we talk about stagger. Maybe it's not like a, a dirt modify where one tire is bigger than the other, but more so one tire just you got a bigger spring in the right rear now than, than what you had when you started the race. That's gonna make you lose on exit, which is also what stagger does to you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I did some research on it. It is it's pretty. It gets to be pretty significant when you get you know this big of a growth in in air pressure changes. So yes. Your spring rates absolutely change. Okay. But there's also things that change as well, but yeah. Sure, like driver um, attitude when your tires are that hot. I think, it, yeah, it, it does. <laughs> okay, next. It does. All right, so shocks. I, I, nothing has changed here from the previous version. Um, although this is a great view of Dover. So just as a reminder, um, these colors here represent the velocity of travel in those uh, shocks. Kind of like your uh, histograms, right? The histograms map out the velocity of travel for the shocks over over a period of time of samples. What this does is it takes and plots those the shock travel velocities 
on the track itself to see so you can see where those bumps are. So you can see, you know, this car is just those shocks are just moving like crazy, right? I would say, you know, there we should have worked to to clean these up, but it's a great representation of how these uh this view of your shocks work really well. So now on this obviously we have and you can see here on the left column here, you can see what the shock settings are. And you could argue that, you know, we should we should have had no shock trouble, but we probably wouldn't need to go back in and, and play with the springs and it, and to get a little more, um, I would say, a little more positive control over those tires going around that track because it's just bouncing like crazy. I so think that, I think a, I think the driver could have avoided some of those some of those potholes. I'm sure he could have, but <laughs> but you can't really. It's hard to do that with with I, a beer in one hand <laughs> and the wheel in the other. So not at Dover, take a, yeah. yeah. You're not gonna miss nothing at Dover. No. Okay, so the, nothing's changed here, but I did once again add a little few notes there to help provide some reminders. Slip and spin. Um. So the idea. So starting at the car slip angle, right? This that's what this is. And now this looks better when you kind of look at it with one at a time. The idea here is that the as the car goes around the it goes around the corner. This again, the slip angle is, is the direction of the car, how the car is pointed versus the direction of travel. Just you know, to an extreme case of what this looks like is if you were to watch those sprint cars, right? The sprint cars kick that car completely sideways and they go around the corner. Well, they got a massively huge slip angle versus direction of travel. Well, we're doing some of that as well. And so in the, the slip angle, what we want to do is achieve a a reasonable amount of slip angle to where we get maximum traction but not burning up the tires going through the corner you know some say that you know the next gen doesn't like a lot of yaw if you will that's essentially saying not a lot of slip angle because you'll lose the downforce on the diffuser so we do want to manage how much slip angle we got going through the corner now these screens were were here in the previous version um what i did add is a is a time adding graph below that so you can start to see because i like getting the measurements of what is my minimum what's my maximum what's my average slip angle and what does that look like as you're going around the corner as you're going around the track um then i've also given uh the steering right how much steering you put it in as well as that steer angle again which is the, the tires now we have three slip angles one is the car itself but the car has a think of that as the as the aggregate of both the front and the rear slip angles of what those two slip angles what they are they end up resulting in overall car overall car slip angle so if we look at the front slip angle you can see here where the front tires are got a slip angle here like here for example we're at five degrees six degrees is really what we're calling is where you want to be maximum so now i have a up there on my github i do have a sim hub slip angle meter and i know bob you've been playing with that and i've been playing with that as well and when i took my break before i took my break from i racing i remember i was driving my slip angle i'd try to keep it around four four on my little dashboard as i'm going around the corner um and when i came back i completely ignored it and i was doing that here so if, let me go back to was this lap 23 here that got a little better Oh, here it is. All right. So I was, that's so. If you look at this, right? I got. I'm sitting here at five, almost at six. I'm just, and we saw that with the tire heat map, just destroying those front tires. It's a great way to show that you know we did. This is way too hot of a slip angle, and so obviously there needed to be some more work to get that down. And then you we must, have a rear. You, you had to be oh. mad at somebody right there. You had to be like that guy just hit me. I'm gonna get him back, and I'm gonna chase him down no matter what. Yeah, let's see. Is that, well, is that what you well, were following me? <laughs> so let's see. Look at my throttle. Let's see. I did. Well, hold on. I did lift off the throttle you a did? little bit here, and then, <laughs> and then I got back. Look, I'm, I'm almost full throttle before the apex of the corner. Oh yeah, sixty percent right? right there. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not letting that thing roll through at all. I'm no. just trying to chase somebody down. You're chasing somebody. Stick your finger out the window at me, will you? I come get you. <laughs> I did. Oh wait, wait. Look at this one. 
Before the before the apex of the corner, I'm almost back full throttle again. Yeah. But wait, I did use my brake a little bit. No way. Yeah, right there. See in the yeah. Yeah, you're but, trying to set it a little bit. But but look at it. I get a set, and then I'm like, that's. <laughs> that that's pretty harsh on the throttle. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> so you see, so, you know. that's not backing up your corners, is it? No. If, in no. fact, just to just for fun, <laughs> let's go back to the driver here. What's it? Yeah. Look, and you see where that that slip angle, right, shows it's gonna coincides with that turn up the, the right tire. front of the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you look at my driver grid, I look got at the grid all, all black. All black. I'm all black. I'm yeah. So funny. <laughs> all right, so, all right. so this is where slip and spin comes in, right? Yep. Um, and then the rear, right? So here, the rear, interesting whether or not maybe. And so this also coincides with I got no heat in the right rear tires because I got no slipping going on here. I'm, they're just not working at all. But yeah. So with that said, you know, we want to keep, we want to maintain an overall car slip angle um, to where it's not getting too steep here so yeah so that's how that slip angle so how you drive that corner is going to affect these slip angles the most i think right yet we're still looking to see how we're going to adjust the setting we want to set the car up to where we maintain that slip angle right okay we so also, we also need to work on the driver to make sure he's driving the car right and that's what this is for is <laughs> is it a car is it a driver issue or is it a car issue mm-hmm and that can be that can be dialed in and worked out right here. Exactly. Okay, so um, we have also the spin. I haven't really changed the spin except I did put some of the heat maps down here in the spin to give you an idea. What? So w there's a common theme throughout all these worksheets I want to call out, and that is I want to give the data you're looking for right. So here we're looking for okay, we're we're going to come to this page because we want to see if we're spinning left or a little bit right. That's the main source of information to look for. But what I want to do is make sure I gave you the context of that left or spin around it. All right. So that's why you have so much data above. So what is my ARB, right? All the settings in the garage comes forward. And how am I driving that left or spin? And then what's the tire result? So while it may look like there's a lot of duplicate data, what I'm looking to do is give you the context. So I want you to go from this page because you got enough information to make a decision on a setting change. I don't want you to have to go back from screen to screen to screen. Okay, what data am I looking for to make a decision? I want all, everything you have right here to make a decision, go from here right back into the game to make a change, right? So here we have the rear spin, right? So here we can see right here, that's pretty cool, right? I got a red, I'm spinning the, right there, I just buzzed that tire at 5%. Right, so 6%. That's not a good number. <clears throat> that's spinning that tire. So that's where that becomes useful. And then the difference, the difference between the spins and here's, so I was using this screen here. Um, the idea behind this screen, the rear wheels spin difference is, can I adjust that rear differential to reduce that rear, the spin difference between the two wheels? And I'll be honest with you, um, I, we did a little testing, then there might be some issues with that rear differential, but that's a whole nother video here, I think. But so anyways, I would encourage all the users here watching the videos to go play with this screen, make adjustments to the rear differential and see what kind of results they get. Then you can see what kind of temperature heat maps we got. So the rear spin, right? The Now we got that cross, a dynamic cross weight uh, temperature heat map at the very bottom of the screen where you see the left rear and right rear left temperature average this is where this should come into where the these heat signatures should balance out if you get that rear wheel spin difference reduced so and then we got the details because i still like details and we still have that that's didn't change and we have notes a little bit of notes here on the on the slip and spin the suspension details the reason why, so this now this gets where most people, I just want to call it, most people will never come to these screens. I like them a lot. I do use them because what I'm looking for on this screen here is, yes, we have some 
really cool color patterns, but the one you want to pay attention to is at the bottom of the screen, the first row, the, the shock velocity. Here I'm looking at the left front, shock velocity. Here's how I'm going to use this screen, okay? If, first of all, there, if I were to come back, let me step back, let me come back to this screen here, right? We, we looked at this screen and we said, oh my God, the shocks are out of control, okay? We've got a lot of color there. I'm going to now drop down to the suspension details. And what I'm going to look for are these, is this first row of the waveforms, the shock velocity. So I have left front shock velocity here. I'm going to then expand this, zoom in on the green box, or I'm going to shrink that down. I can use my cursor to zoom in on this guy, okay? And if you look at this grid, the grid here is pretty important. It coincides. It, coincides with our shock velocity range, which is zero to 10 inches per second in one direction and negative 10 inches per second on the other direction. These, these, by the way, we forget, but these numbers correspond directly to your shock settings. So your, your, your low speed settings is your like your zero to two. Your high speed setting is like zero to four around there for that range and you can say your six to ten is your slope settings so these numbers represent correspond directly to the settings in your game so here i'm looking at here i have a peak if i look at this peak right we're getting up to eight inches per second so i know if i want to knock this peak down i need to go change a slope setting and what's important here is that I have a compression stroke and then a rebound. If this re if I if I come in, let me see if I can zoom in there here. Let me bring this line over here, what I'm looking at here on the left. So you can see where I have a, a compression stroke that goes almost all up to nine. Okay, so that means my now it's in my high speed slope range of a setting. What's cool here is as it comes down. You can see our rebound catches that because it doesn't shoot all the way back down. In contrast, let me bring this cursor all the way over here to this one, where my it it goes up to now I'm in my high speed setting because it's right around six. But as it goes crosses that line, it still comes down to a high speed setting. So Maybe I could have increased my low speed setting and kind of slowed that down as it crossed over the zero mark. So I had less of a rebound. This so is this a, is where. This is good stuff, but we should probably save that for a shock video. Yeah, we can come back and do that. I agree. But I can listen to you because yeah, I don't get these shocks at all. But just that little bit we got right there is with some good stuff. But I think we should definitely do a better, uh, do a, a, an updated shock video. On, you agree. This one is gets pretty deep. So let's yeah. do save that for a further one. All right. So anyways, we have all those details. And then these are more detailed than you'll ever want to see in the histograms here. And then we have a, a roll histogram, which I'm still working on this one to see how we can affect that roll rate. But here you have a roll in, in, in degrees. So that's where these guys are. And then some notes again. So that's essentially, I mean, that's a lot, right? I just went over a lot and come back to the overview. I just want to stress again, while there's a lot of pages in this workbook and it can feel like it's overwhelming, don't let it overwhelm you because at the end of the day, you only need this page. You think of the, everything else is just for fun, right? Because you like tweaking and you like digging in deep, right? But if you're looking to just, I just want to summarize here. If you're looking just to do a quick set, set up, don't get into all those stuff. This page, the overview is, our, is your all-in-one your all page. It does everything for you to get a car set up and go race and you'll be competitive. But if you still like to play with all the other data and all that, then the rest is good. So that's that's the new workbook, right? That's it? That's the whole thing? That's everything. You went through all the pull downs on next on next gen? Dang. I went through, yeah, I went through everything. Oh, yep. Yeah, no, but yeah. but right. when I came across it, this was I love this one. This is I'm gonna leave you with this one. I mean that's this oh, yeah. tells you, I think of this as your setup results page, right? Because at the end of the day, everything we're doing with setup is about delivering traction to the car. Mm -hmm. And so this really exposes everything.
So there you go. That's the new workbook. Oh, I do want to call out one thing is um, on the on the next gen folder. I did remove the the arrow page uh, where we had the downforce oh, calculations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So when the first car first came out, those downforce calculations were incredibly useful because we would tune the car, the rig of the car, to where we got our smooth curves. Right. Now you could argue, oh yeah, my numbers and downforce are wrong. That was just a matter of whether or not I picked the right. Um, um, dimensions of the body, I could have adjusted that. But what we were using that page for was to look at the curve, and it really gave us a good idea of, of that. Um, the attitude of the car as we went around the track. But the the diffuser is such a big deal and has such an impact to those downforce calculations. And right now, I can't find any calculations generate a decent model. So I pulled that down, but I know a lot of people enjoyed using that page. So the calculations are still in the workbook. So people can go and pull those forward and put them back up there if they want to create their own workbook. That's also why I put this these workbooks up on GitHub because people can take them and then adjust them as they want to make them their own. Cool. So that's cool. about it. No, that's that's good stuff right there. A lot of good stuff we can use. Um, and you're right. And this may, the screen you have right here, this is what I probably use 95% of the time, um, uh, you know, to set the car up, especially in the early stages. Because, like, for me, I, I'll put the car down there in turn one. At, I think I'm at distance number down at the bottom. Uh, 1950 is what I use where I put the car at. And uh, kind of start building from there. And then once I get the car drivable, then I start using the other pages for, you know, the tires and, and the um, shocks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Is the is suspension histogram working? Yeah, it, it works. A lot of people use it. Um, I, because of the work I've done with the shocks and got in so deep, um, I don't, I go to my shock, I go to the suspension details. So wait, so we changed. So yes, it works. And a lot of people use them. So for me, I tend to, I prefer what I'm doing. I prefer to go to this page so I can see really, I get more context than the histogram, mm -hmm. but it's to each his own. And so the, and by the way, one of the things about this workbook, I'm glad you asked, asked that question. So one of the things about the workbook and I've learned through you know, through the years of engineering and working with customers is everybody looks at data differently. And so I'm not a, I don't get religious on how you should look at data. I get religious on look at the data any way you want. So while some people may look at a histogram and say, okay, this is awesome, right? Because for the way their brain works, this, this gives them everything they need. Um, for me, I tend to, my, personally, I go to I go to this page. I look at the overall picture. Okay, here I can see the bumps of the track. And if I can't, and I'll try to adjust from these pages here. If I can't get these colors to clean up, I don't want it all green. I do want some color in there, but I don't want big patches. Big patches like this blue patch here. Let me show you what I mean. This big patch of blue means I didn't catch the shock. <laughs> that means that shock is sitting there rebounding. It's rebounding at a rate about six inches per second of travel, but it's still bouncing around. Right. I want to see it. I want to okay. see a color that goes one sharp. Now, if I can't get my shocks tuned in, look at these pages, then only then will I drop down and go deep into the shock details page, right? right. But I try not. To, I try not to come to these pages because I don't want to work that hard on it. Yeah, a lot of work. There's a lot. There's a lot of work tuned in those shocks, but like I said, that's that's a whole other. Uh video on itself and we should do yeah that. but but the point here is be with the workbooks is let people have mm -hmm. different ways to look at the data so it makes sense for themselves i'm not trying to force oh, yeah. anybody to read it one certain way i know a guy that if you go to the right heights uh page number two up there um click on that that's his page, that's his page. <laughs> he goes i can build a car right here from this page right here there you go that's that's, how that's exactly what i want Right, so you love this page. there's there's a lot of di a lot of different workbooks, 
um, there's a lot of different worksheets in the workbook itself. The overall works. It's actually technically it's a workspace. You have workbooks and worksheets. Yeah. It's so awesome. there's a, it's awesome. there's a lot of different pages, but you don't have to use them all. Use what you want and ignore the rest. I only use probably ten percent, fifty percent of the whole thing. I don't have time. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Exactly. To that stuff. That's a lot. This is of just time. about. You know, it's all about having fun. That's all it is. That's it. If I was serious, I wouldn't be on iRacing. That's right. I'd be doing <laughs> I have an old race car. Oh. I'd be doing something different. I'm just sitting here right. spending time playing time. Well, I think it's brilliant, Tom. I think you did a fantastic job on this. It's definitely a big improvement. Uh, you got a lot of stuff cleaned up on it. Uh, I like all the color stuff like that. And, and the driver page is, is, is to die for. That's for sure. Go to the, go to the driver's page first real quick. We have to get off here, but... Go back to the driver's page and uh, compare compare some laps for us on that stint you did. Let's go to like lap three and then lap 20 or something like that. And put let's put the car down in the middle of turn one. Position 1950. Oh, that's good. 13. That's fine. Okay. So, and this is what I was looking at the other day, is if you look at lap three which is the blue steering wheel. He's got 40.1 steering wheel angle. Then when he got down to lap 25, because he burned up that right front tire, he's got 62. His steering wheel angle is 62. He's cranking the shit of that wheel because the car just won't turn no more. Pretty, mu pretty much. Am I reading that right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's, yeah, it's, the insight you get is is really is quite funny, actually. I mean, it's killing me. Yeah, the guy was going like a bat out of hell at the beginning, and 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 just killing it, and then come lap twenty, he just can't go no more, and he's cranking the snot out of that wheel, and the car's still plowing. You can see on your screen right there on the far right the red tires over there. He's just cranking the snot out of that wheel, trying to get his car to turn. It just won't turn. Okay, so it, so you bring up a good point, right? So now it's not turning anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see if we look at the steer angle mm -hmm. in the third call, third row. I mean, mm -hmm. first we were at just, just below two. Now we're all the way up to three. Uh huh. So just to give you an idea, if you're starting out, let I know now if I got a three steer angle, and I'm on lap three. It's only going to get worse, it's right? Get worse. So you really, I want to stress here, you can really start to use the steer angle as an early indicator of how well you're going to do in the longer run. There you go. There you go. I love it. That's it's brilliant. Yep. There you go. That's brilliant. All right. Uh, any last words before we get out of here? Nope. That's a wrap for me. All right. Thank you, Tom. Oh. We have, go ahead. One more thing is I'll be posting these up on the GitHub oh, here yeah. in a few minutes. And that's where people can get it. And on the Discord channel, there's a room that says Motec files only, I think. Uh, put that link in that. That's a read-only file box over there. Uh, and on that file box is just where you go get the links. No comments go in that one where he's going to put this. Yep. You get the link, you go about your business. If you got comments, go over to Tom's Tech Stuff and ask him questions over there. Um, so he'll put the link over there, or I'll put it over there on the Discord. He'll Tom will do it. Um, on the Discord side. Um, okay. All right, so let's wrap this up. Like I said, thank you, Tom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of Buster's Corner, man, without you, buddy, we'd be lost, that's for sure. Um, you guys, there's if you want to donate to the channel, there's a link down below for a PayPal account. That money goes towards the server time that we pay for. Um, we don't make any money off of this organization. It's all free to you guys to have fun. But if you'd like to donate a couple of bucks towards the server time, it is appreciated. Um, also the links to Tom's GitHub should be down at the bottom of his video as well. Uh, actually there's always Tom's GitHub link is always at the bottom of our videos, uh, along with the other ones that help us out. Uh, Stint Analyzer, we use those guys a lot. We really appreciate their time. Um, and we appreciate all you guys at Buster's Corner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making this the community that it is. Say goodbye, Tom. Bye. Bye. I see Bill popped in. Say goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, Bill. <laughs> all right.